Hey, good morning friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business here this morning on Don't Sleep on the Dallas Cowboys. Because literally, as bad as our offense has been, you cannot sleep. It's putrid. Are they really that inept? And, of course, that's the major topic in the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott, the play calling, everything, all of the above. Well, it's true that it is all of the above. Now, we wonder why we've had Jason Garrett for all these years. And it's the fact that Jerry Jones believes that he can be the next Tom Landry. And some people will go through and say, well, compare their coaching records and things, and you look at how long it took for Tom Landry to finally win a Super Bowl that, you know, it was 71, 11 years in, but that was a different era back then, so you can't really compare apples to oranges on that fact. But the thing that you look at with Tom Landry was Tom Landry was an innovator. The shotgun, the flex defense, using computers, going to places where football scouts didn't go, getting a Bob Beeman. He was always ahead of the curve. He was doing something different and throwing something that you weren't expecting at you. That's where you look at a Bill Belichick. Every week, Bill Belichick will come up with three or four plays of something you won't expect. You know, remember having all those defensive linemen standing up if you're an offensive lineman and you go to the line of the scrimmage and you see, you know, the tackle standing up, it causes a hesitation. You're like, what the F? What are they doing? <clears throat> and that gives you an advantage. When you think about the Eagles in the Super Bowl, having Nick Foles go out for a pass, boom, it's unexpected. It gives you an advantage. And when you look back, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> when you look back at some of the offenses out there from the run and shoot, the K gun, the Wildcat, even the Redskins chuck and duck, they worked at least for a time because it was something different. The Wildcat, when Miami ran it, oh my God. They were killing people. But then, of course, defenses after a year caught up to it and, you know, everybody was doing it. So it was no big thing. You were used to playing with it. And that's where you have to start getting with the Cowboys. We need to find something that's a little bit different and unexpected because clearly everything we do, people know what we're going to do. That's the first thing. We're playing the Lions, and I see people saying, oh, the Lions, their defense is fantastic and everything else. Yes, their pass defense is rated as one of the top in the NFL. And here's the interesting thing with statistics. And if you ever take statistics in college, you'll understand that you can take the same data and prove two opposite points by the way that you present the data between mean, median, mode, and modulation. You can get two opposite points outcomes with it <clears throat> so yes their pass defense is really good they're giving up less than 150 yards on you know by the air but part of that is because they're so bad on the ground while they have the top ranked pass defense they have the worst ranked rush defense so if you know a team stinks against the run and are great against the pass, common sense is going to tell you to do what? Run the ball. So teams are spending more time running the ball against the Lions than they are trying to pass it, which will skew those numbers. So I'm not saying that their pass defense isn't really good, but if I know I'm going to have more success running the football than passing, then I'm going to run the ball more, which means then that's going to be less yardage. You follow the logic here? And that's where the Cowboys, for one, have to take a look at this team and the picture of it and say, okay, right now, 
what we're doing well is is Zeke Elliott is getting some yards. He's got to eliminate the mistakes, but Zeke Elliott is running the ball well. Yet, he's leading the NFL right now in rushing, but he's only getting 16 carries a game. He's had 15, 16, and 17 carries in the three games. What you've got to do is you've got to run the ball. Flat out. You're going to have to pound the ball. And see, I know that's not innovative, but it's something to build on. Understand that Seattle beat us by running the ball. They knew their offensive line is not holding up for Russell Wilson. They're beat up. And even though they only rushed for 2.6 yards per carry, they went at it 36 times. Think about that. Zeke Elliott averaged 7.9 yards a carry, but we only ran him 17 times. Seattle averaged 2.6 yards a carry and rushed 37 times to protect their quarterback and get a win. Does that seem a little amiss to you? Does that seem to defy logic? Because here's what happens when we start running the ball effectively, when we don't abandon it. Typically, and every game is different, but typically, the team's going to have to start putting eight in the box. They're going to be worried about Zeke getting five, six, seven yards out of whack or possibly finally breaking one open. Safety's in the box. You've got seven, eight guys there. It's more single coverage. You're more cognizant of saying we got to stop the run, which means when you take a Dak Prescott who's built like a linebacker, who can take a hit, and I'm not saying we want to make him, you know, a wildcat quarterback, but now you have to start looking and saying, right now we just need first downs. We need to keep drives going. We need to get something to feel good about to get some points because that becomes contagious in the same way that the mob mentality is building with all of the fans here. The 80%, the walking dead, are ready to feed on the Dallas Cowboys and anybody who wants to say anything about the Dallas Cowboys. They literally are the walking dead right now. <clears throat> you get some positive plays. You start getting a running game. It will open up other things. See, I'm not sure right now what our identity is. To me, it seems like we're trying to force a square peg in a round hole. You built this team to be a running team. You've got the, the, the mules to pound. You've got a running back who wants to eat. But you're only giving the ball 17 times a game, the last game. That defies logic. And as much as they say, well, we're going to make this a Dak-friendly offense, it seems like we're just throwing stuff out there. We're throwing so many different wide receivers that you're not getting used to the tendencies of one. You start learning when you play with guys on a regular what each guy does well. We've had so many different wide receivers. We keep changing them play after play after play. You're not getting into a rhythm with anybody. So I think the next thing you need to do is, is figure out, who are my three starters? Who are the receivers that are going to be out there on a regular? Who are the ones that can best get open? Because that's another issue, that guys aren't getting open. So you've got to start with baby steps on this offense. Now make no mistake, we're not out of anything. The Giants have a tough road in front of them. The Eagles have a tough road in front of them. The Redskins, after they come from the break, have to pay the Saints. If we can get a win against the Detroit Lions, just get that win under our belt. Just start building something. You have some games in front of you that are winnable, that give you an opportunity to bring this thing back. I'm not part of that crowd that says we're going to be 5-11. and 11. 
not real good. These people that have already abandoned a season three games in, I'm not ready for that yet. And I think we're a long ways away from that, as long as we have that defense. So if I'm the Dallas Cowboys right now, I say, Zeke, get ready to run the football. And then we're going to run some more. And Zeke, when you need a break, Austin, we're going to get you more involved. Because those are the two positives that you got on this offense right now. And until they stop them, you keep riding with it. So, guys, I've got to uh, do some stuff to take care of the dog. And I've got to get to my day job. So, um, any news, of course, in the Dallas Cowboys, we'll be sure to bring it to you here. Um, as always, be sure to click the subscribe button. Like it, the video if you like it. If you hate it, hate it. And leave a comment for me. Whew. Big game tonight. You've got the Rams against the Vikings. If the Rams get a win, it looks like they're kind of running away with things or maybe peaking too early. If the And the Vikings, of course, then whew, one, two, and one. It's not the way they expect to start out the season. Kind of starts to bury them. So this is an important game. And finally, ones that mean something on Thursday night. So, guys. Have a great day. It's almost the weekend, and it's almost coming up to game day. Three days, three hours, 51 minutes, and 13 seconds from now, we're kicking off against the Lions. I'm Mark Holmes, the Cowboy Joe Boo, and I'll see you soon.